Namaskar everyone this is Nishant Raghunath here and welcome to a new video from Kaidos Financial Management Bootcamp In this video we'll be learning about a very interesting a short and sweet chapter and that is leverage So this particular chapter comes under capital structuring decisions and uh, it's it, you cannot actually correlate this particular chapter to the whole module of capital, capital structuring because this as a standalone chapter itself is questioned for your examinations so you can learn this chapter this is very short very sweet very simple and be assured that you will get say or 4 to 10 mark 4 to 5 mark or 4 to 6 mark questions for your examination so before we head on to the structure of the study the structure of the chapter how the syllabus has been said let me give you a small quick explanation so that you can understand what you mean by leverage imagine this is a rock a boulder and uh, you are standing right here with both your arms out there trying to push it and move unfortunately this thing is not moving so you decide you will take the help of a tool or something okay so you move a bit you move a bit and you place a rod okay a rod a metal rod with some kind of support and what you do is you grab a hold of this and sorry my arms look weird apply down force here correct now when you apply down force here obviously another force works in the opposite direction towards this end and this will help you move the boulder much more easier yes see this is like a similar example wherein you use a jacky lever to lift a car yeah to in order for tire maintenance or say your tire gets punctured in your car you need to lift the car right it's impossible for you to use just your brute force and lift it like there might be people who can do that but then the generic person will not be so comfortable in doing the same correct now what did you do here you took a third party a outside resource or outside item and used that to magnify your power so you are here using your own force which by on its own you know you can't push the boulder you can't move the boulder so you took an outside resource an outside resource in this case a lever and with that you achieve your objective of moving the rock moving the rock correct this is what you mean by leverage the phenomenon by which you use an outside resource in order to magnify m a g n i f y magnify your own force so that you achieve your objective with ease you achieve this with ease yeah just like how you use a jacky to lift a car which otherwise would have been impossible for a person to lift yeah so use a jacky and just do the circular motion like rotating motion using the lever of the jacky and slowly by slowly you are applying little bit force and the jacky lifts 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 pushes the car from the bottom and the car is lifted this is leverage all right so using the help of an outside resource to magnify your own force okay so as far as a business is concerned to run a business you need fund a fund can come from the owners or it can come from outside that is third party owners fund is what you call equity now sir fund is what you call debt now with this fund you run the business and achieve your objective of returns to owners correct that's your ultimate objective correct so in financial management what leverage is or what leverage means is how you use a third party resource that is how you use debt to fund your business and thereby achieving your objective wherein wherein you try to give maximum returns to owners so how a small change in your capital structuring how bringing in a third party fixed cost bearing capital instrument like debt can impact can impact the return that goes to the owners that is leverage so here the outside third party debt this is the lever 
all right the lever which comes at a fixed cost but makes it easy to run the business because they bring in fund yes they add on to your capital yeah so your capital your equity is your own force now with your own force the business is not moving so you are taking some debt now you are moving the business clear yeah understood the concept is yes? it's that simple now our syllabus of leverage or a financial management syllabus of leverage can be split into three not the syllabus the leverage contact term leverage can be split into three first we have operating leverage then we have financial leverage and finally then we have combined leverage which is nothing but a combination of operating and financial so in order to explain this more um, let me give you the basic premise of profit we know sales less expenses or cost yeah sales less cost equals profit correct yeah basic basic formula but see here there is not much specialization or we are not digging any deep we are just giving normal revenue minus whole cost we'll get profit but as a management accountant or as a finance manager you would be very interested to know what all are the costs that are coming to the company yes so we can basically split our cost into two one is variable cost another is fixed cost correct now let me just change this formula a bit let me just change this formula a bit i'm just moving this sales moving this a bit more less variable cost less variable cost will give you something so sales less variable cost will give you something called contribution all right yes now i'm bringing this fixed cost in the formula i'm bringing this fixed cost in this formula less fixed cost will give you less fixed cost will give you what we had previously that is our profit you give us our profit okay so this whole expenses i split it into variable cost and fixed cost okay so sales less variable cost giving you contribution less fixed cost giving you profit all right now basic split up is done we can even split this up split this up further but before going to that split up let me ask you a question why is contribution this term called as contribution why do you know why most of the students that have come across don't know why that term is called contribution like sales yeah you know what sales is you selling and getting money variable cost is cost which is varying fixed cost is cost that is fixed so each term has a meaning but why is contribution this particular term sales minus variable cost called contribution say my sales is 100 i have a variable cost percentage of 40 so whatever i am selling 40 percent comes as variable cost so less 40 percentage 60 is what i am getting as contribution correct say my sales is uh, 5000 i have variable cost percentage of 40 so 2000 goes as my variable cost 3000 is what i am getting i am selling at 10000 Have variable cost of forty, so four thousand is my variable cost. Six thousand is what I'm getting. Sorry, ten thousand. Correct. Now, what do you notice here? See, regardless of the amount you are having as sales, for sure, forty percentage of it will go for variable cost. That is, if I'm achieving sales of X amount, forty percent of the X amount is sure, for sure, an expense of mine. correct i cannot i cannot recover that cost it is gone it will be definitely gone so whenever i am saying i'll achieve sales of 1000 i'm not getting money for 1000 i'm sure out of that 1400 will go i'll get 600 to meet by rest of the expenses and take profit yes correct so when i am selling for 100 40 will not come to me 40 will be gone but a 60 will come to me with which i can meet my other expenses and take my share of profit correct so when a sales is made of 100 the actual money that sales contributes to the business to meet other expenses and for me to take my profit is 60 so 60 3000 or 6000 is what the sales of 100 5000 and 10000 respectively contributes to the business so that the business can take that contribution whatever that sale contributes and meet their expenses and take the balance as their profit correct so it's out of this contributed amount they have to meet all their fixed expenses they have to pay their taxes pay their interest expenses and everything and if there is any balance 
take that profit and split it among their shareholders or owners. Yes. Now this is why this particular term is called contribution. That is the amount the sales or revenue of a company actually contributes to the business so that the business can meet their fixed expenses and their share of profit. If at all, if there is any balance, then give a share of profit to the owners. Clear? Simple. See, now I'm going to bring up a further split up. See, this fixed cost, I can further split it up into operating fixed cost and non-operating fixed cost. If I'm to give an example, an operating fixed cost will be something like depreciation. All right, because that is a depreciation comes for assets that you're buying for business and assets are bought for operations and you pay depreciation as an operating fixed cost. Non-operating fixed cost can be something like interest. Interest that you pay. You borrow money, you pay loan interest. Correct? So I'm going to restructure this whole this whole formula once again. Oh, sorry. Selection. Just taking this fixed cost aside. Taking this apart. Don't want this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to post operating fixed cost first. Oh, sorry. Operating fixed cost first. Contribution less operating fixed cost will give me my earnings before interest and tax and I told you non-operating visit cost is nothing but interest yes generally we can term it as interest okay it's interest we can we will consider it as interest so no sorry your non-operating visit cost when you deduct from your EBIT will give you your will give you your profit correct so let me just move this guy a bit up come up come up come up yes simple right so I further split the formula. I further split fixed cost into operating and non-operating and reached two other levels. So sales minus variable cost, you get contribution. Contribution minus operating fixed cost, you get a bit. A bit minus non-operating fixed cost, you get profit or earnings before tax. Clear? Yes. Now let me put some numbers here. Say my sales is 1000. My variable cost comes at 60%. So it's 600. So my contribution is 400, correct? My operating fixed cost, let it be 100. So my EBIT is 300. And finally, my non-operating fixed cost, let it be 200. So my profit is 100. Clear? Yes. Now I'll show you what are the different kinds of leverages. So we'll use three colors. Let operating leverage be in blue, financial leverage be in green, and combined leverage be in red. So let's first do operating leverage. In operating leverage, all the leverages are like a formula, a division formula with a numerator and a denominator. In operating leverage, the items that you take from this particular area. So for all leverages, this is all that you need. Okay. So here you take contribution and EBIT and thereby operating leverage is calculated. Contribution divided by EBIT. For financial leverage, you take EBIT and EBT. So it is EBIT by EBT, thereby calculating financial leverage. So here, what would be your answer? 400 divided by 300 is 1.33 times. And here it is 300 divided by 100. 3. Correct? Now, combined leverage is contribution and EBT contribution and EBT combined leverages contribution and EBT that is 400 divided by 104 so what is combined leverage contribution by EBT it can also be written as combined leverage equals operating leverage into financial leverage oh this is not C this is supposed to be I'm sorry I made a mistake here this is not C this is this is uh, financial leverage. Okay, financial leverage. Sorry for that. Yeah. Combined leverage is operating leverage into financial leverage. What is the operating leverage? It's contribution by EBIT. And financial leverage is EBIT by EBT. So you cancel off both EBITs, you'll get C by EBT. C by EBT. So if you take 1.33 and 3, multiply them. If I'm taking 1.33 and 3 and I multiply them, let me just give the calculator. There is a calculator. Yeah. 
three three into three. Correct. Three point nine nine. That's four. Yes, this is a decimal difference. Correct. So combined leverage is nothing but operating leverage into financial leverage. Understood? Basic stuff, right? Basic stuff. This is all. What do you mean by leverage? Okay, so you got all the formulas. Once again, I'll repeat. Operating leverage is contribution by a bit. Financial leverage is a bit by EBT. Combined leverage is contribution by EBT or operating leverage into financial leverage. All right. Simple stuff. Right? Simple stuff. Now I'll tell you what's the relevance of this particular item called leverage. Okay, so I told you right. How using debt, how using this outside third party will affect our objective. How easily we'll affect our objective and how we can increase the return to our owners. Yes, so I'll show you how. Say, operating leverage is one point three three, right? So I'll write in blue. What does operating leverage communicate? It communicates that if Sales move up or down by one time. One time, then your EBIT will move up or down by one point three three times. Okay. So you might have a confusion here. See here we establish relation between contribution and EBIT. So it should have been if contribution moves, then how will EBIT move? That's how it should have been, correct? But here I wrote if sales, if sales move, then EBIT will move like this. Why? Why is that? I'll quickly explain. See, what you are seeing right here is I'll just take this off for now. I'll just take this off for now. Sorry. See what you are seeing right here. Is the exact same data, but I have given it like multiple, multiple, multiple uh, instances. So we'll just take this one. We'll just take this one for example. Okay, we'll just take this one for example. So sales is thousand here, variable cost six hundred, contribution four hundred. Everything as mentioned. So like, look, look at these examples like the D column, E column, F column. Here sales moved to two thousand. Here sales moved dropped to five hundred. Here sales moved to five thousand. So here sales grew two times. Here sales dropped by 0.5 times. Here sales grew by five times. Correct. See what happens to contribution as well. Contribution also move in the same direction. So sales move two times from 1000 to 2000. Contribution move two times from 400 to 800. Sales went down from 1000 to 500. Contribution went down from 400 to 100. Same. It went by half. Sales increased five times from thousand to five thousand. Contribution increased five times from four hundred to two thousand. Clear? Simple stuff, right? Simple stuff. That's it. That's why I said contribution and sales move in the same direction. Contribution moves one time. That means sales has also moved one time. Sales becomes three times. That means contribution will become three times. Because contribution, variable cost, and sales they move all in the same direction. All right? Yes, fine. Alright, so let me just clear this page. Now, financial leverage is still that. Financial, financial leverage tells that if a bit moves up or down by one time, then EBT will move up or down by how many times? Three times. Okay? Clear. Now finally, combined leverage. So combined leverage is contribution divided by ABT. Contribution divided by ABT. So numerator is contribution, so we can link it to sales. So if sales move up or down by one time, then EBT will move up or down by how many times? Four times. Correct. Simple, right? Now I'll give you a quick explanation using multiple, multiple examples based on the same example. Okay, let's go back to our Excel chart. Okay, so here is our Excel chart. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 
So I'll just take this and take it to another page. New page, new page. Zoom this a bit. Okay. So this is sales uh, less variable cost. My mouse is glitching. Sales less variable cost. Okay. Sales less variable cost equals contribution. This is less fixed operating fixed cost. Less operating fixed cost will give you a bit. Less non-operating fixed cost. Less non-operating fixed cost will give you EBT. So from here we can find out our operating leverage, financial leverage and combined leverage. Operating leverage is nothing but contribution divided by a bit. 1.333. This is a bit divided by EBT. 3 and this is finally contribution divided by EBT 4. So we know what it means by these um, uh, figures, right? Operating leverage of 1.33 tells us that if sales move by one time, then our contribution will move by 1.3. Sorry, sorry, EBIT will move by 1.333 times. Yes, so let's check. So I'm going to move sales by one time. So by moving sales by one time, I mean, so 1000 is a sales currently. I'll move sales with another 1000. So sales will go to 2000. So 1000 into 2. 1000 into 2. Sales is going to 1000 into 2. Oh, it's small. small. 1000 into 2. So sales become 1000 into 2. So variable cost 60% will be 1200. Contribution is a balance. I've given formula here. Variable operating visit cost will not change. It will be 100 itself. So if you're wondering how the 1200 800 came, Sales 2000, variable cost is 60 percentage from our question. So 2000, 60 percentage is 1200. 2000 minus 1200 is 800. Less operating visit cost 100. So your EBIT will be 800 minus 800 minus 100. That is 700. Correct? Now let's check whether EBIT has moved based on 1.33 times. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. So what was our EBIT? Our EBIT was, our EBIT was 300. Correct? But it's supposed to move 1.33 times. Let's see what is 1.33 times of EBIT. 300. 1.33 times of EBIT is 400. So what is 300 plus 400? 700. Check. Did EBIT move accordingly? Yes. Most certainly EBIT moved accordingly. Yes. Now, non-operating cost, same. And your EBT becomes 500. Now, we can either check with financial leverage or combined leverage. Let's first check with combined leverage. With combined leverage, it said, if sales move by one, one time, combined leverage says EBT should move by four times. EBT should move by four times. Okay. Let's take our EBT. We'll take our EBT. What is our EBT? It's 100. What is four times of 100? It is 400. It's 400. So what is the, what is the answer that should have come here? Should have been 500. Is our EBT 500? Yes. See? See? How are EBIT and EBT moved? Now, if I am taking financial leverage, let's take a talk on the base of financial leverage. So, it says when financial leverage moves one time, finance, sorry, EBIT moves one time, my um, EBT should move three times. Correct? If EBIT moves one time, EBIT moves one time, my EBT will move 100 times. So, let me just scroll down a bit. If EBIT moves one time, my EBT should move three times. That's what this says, right? So, EBIT, EBT. But here EBIT moved how many times? Here EBIT moved how many times? EBIT moved from 300 to 700. EBIT moved 1.33 times. So, EBIT moved 1.33 times. So, how many times should have EBT gone? Should have been this into this divided by this. Basic cross multiplication. 3.99 times. EBT should have gone 3.99 times. Okay. Yes. That is. That is. 4. We can term it as 4. So, let's just check EBT. EBT was 100. How much did they move? 100 into 3.99. That is like we can. Uh, that's basically because of the decimal issue. Else it would have been proper 4. So it should have 499. It would have been 500. Same. Okay. So if I am like ignoring the decimal here. And uh, making it like 1.33334. Yeah. 
minimize in the decimals. Perfect. See? So, in short, it says if sales, if sales, I'll go down, I'll go down. If sales move by 100 percentage, sorry, if sales move by 1, a bit will move by 1.33, EBT will move by 4. Correct? Correct? Now, if I'm to express all this as percentage, it's all percentage, percentage, where is percentage? Percentage. We can work this out far more easily. Say, for example, I need to increase my sales, say, 152 percentage. Okay, I'm increasing my sales. This is my, say, imagine this is my 100 percentage sales. Okay. 100 percentage sales. I want to increase my sales to 250 percentage. 250 percentage. So my sales is 1000 into 250 percentage. So it becomes 2500. Correct? What will be my EBT? What will be my EBIT? I do not have to do the whole calculation. I can do it super simple here. So if my sales move to 250 percentage, sorry, let me just change the format everywhere. Okay. Sales move by 250 percentage, then my EBT will be, the change in EBT will be 250. So my sales is going to 250 percentage. That's not 250 percentage, it's increasing by 250 percentage. So increase, increase by, increase by. So my sales increase by 250 percentage. So my current sales is 1000, current sales is 1000 with a 250 percentage increase would mean 1000 into Tell me, that will give me, sorry, tell me the sales of the prices in percentage. No, I don't want this in percentage, I want in general. Yeah. But then my sales will go to 3500. If that's the case, my EBIT will increase by how much? My EBT will increase by how much? So it said, when sales go up by one time, when sales go up by one time, a bit will go by 1.33 times. A bit will go by 1.33 times. So sales went by 250 percentage. So if I'm writing. If sales sales go up by one time, a, a bit wait. A small small glitch. Okay, sorted. My EBT will go up by 1.33. So if sales increase by 250 percentage, EBT will increase by 1.33 into 250 percentage. Correct? So here it will be 250 into my operating leverage of 1.33. That will give me 33.33 percentage. Now, my combined leverage says if sales go by one time, sorry, financial leverage says if my EBIT goes by one time, my EBIT EBT, sorry, not EBIT, EBT goes by three times. So, EBIT, EBIT go by one, EBT go by three. Correct. So, here EBIT went by how many times? EBIT went by uh, 1.33 into 250 was 333 percentage. 333 percentage. Right, EBIT went up by 333 percent. That is this one. Yeah. So EBIT went by 330 percent. So EBT should go three times of that 333. So three into 333.33 percentage. So that will be. So that will give me EBT increase at 333 into three. Thousand percentage. Oh wow. Thousand percentage. We can look confirm that in another way as well. From financial leverage, if sales go by one. My EBT should go by 4. EBT should go by 4. Let's check, let's check, let's check. Sales go by 1. It says sales go by 1. EBT should go by, EBT should go up by 4. That's what, that's what it says here. Right, let's scroll down a bit. Yeah. Here actually my sales went up by, sales went up by 250 percentage. So my EBT was supposed to go up by 4 times of 250 percentage, that is 1000 percentage, cross verified. 
Correct. Now let's confirm. Let's confirm whether our finding is right or not. Okay. So here, my sale is 3,500. My variable cost will be 60 percentage of the same. So it's 2,100. Contribution in 1,400. Sorry. Less operating fixed cost of 100 will give me an EBIT of how much? 1,300. So EBIT definitely went up. It went from 3,000, sorry, 300 to 1,300. It went up from 300 to 1,300 less. So what was the increase that was supposed to happen? 333 percent was the increase that was supposed to happen. Correct. 333 percent was the increase that was supposed to happen. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check. What is the increase that actually happened? Increase happened was 1,300 minus 300. Yes. Now let's check the percentage. This divided by this into or 100. Yeah, into 100. 333 percentage correct exact or you can do that in another way as well another way is take this and find its 333 percentage 333 percentage and add it 300 plus 333 percentage not exactly 333 percentage it was supposed to be there's a decimal right it was 330 point something something percentage yeah see so it became 1000 the decimal rounded off the 999 to 1000 see so yes, when sales increased by 250 percentage, EBIT actually increased by 333 percentage, correct. Now let's check the same for uh, EBT. So non-operating cost is 200 and your EBT is 1100. What is the supposed increase for EBT? 1000 percentage increase, right? 1000 percentage increase. Let's check. Let's check. This into 1000 percentage will give you, this into 1000 percentage will give you how much? Will give you 1000. So this plus 1000 will it give the increased figure yes see <laughs> same correct this and this is the same correct so when sales increase by 250 percentage ebt increase by 1000 percentage now i'm going to add another one increase by some random some stupid figure okay 336.37 percentage so sales is sorry it's here 36 so it will be 0.3637 expressed as percentage will be 36.37 percentage. If that's the case, why isn't it isn't coming on? Ah, 36.37 percent. If that was the case, then my EBIT should be this into my operating leverage. What is my operating leverage into 1.33? Okay. So this express as percentage will be 48, taking out decimal. Now this should have been sales this into my combined leverage. Combined leverage is 4. Now this also I am expressing as percentage. So like this, expressing as percentage, okay, with two decimals. Now to cross verify, we can do it like this. If a bit moved by 1, if a bit moved by one and take another pen a bit moved up by one ebt should have moved up by three based on financial leverage right so i'm just going to confirm here a bit moved by how much 48.49 percentage correct so ebt should have moved by three times of 48.49 let's check what is three times of 48.49 let's write it here this into three it should be 145.48. Yes, see, if I am expressing it as percentage, if I am expressing it as percentage, see, same, that simple. All right. So this is why you need leverages. So that when you take a random sales figure or you want to project to a company saying that our sales is currently 10,000, it will go to say some 25,000. That is an increase by 150 percentage or it will go to say 75,000. That is an increase by 65 percentage. Then we can expect our EBIT to go up by so much percentage and EBT to go up by so much percentage. Okay. Yes. Clear. That's it. That's why you need leverages. Okay. Think I've covered everything that's required as far as the theory area of leverages are concerned. Okay. One more thing. One more thing. One more thing. One more area. Just one more area. See, a high operating leverage means you have high operation fixed cost. I'll tell you why. Say my sales is 1000, my variable cost is 200, so my contribution is 800, let me just scroll down a bit, 
and my uh, operating fixed cost is 600 so my EBIT will be 200 so here what is my operating leverage it's 800 by 200 that is four times correct now instead of 800 600 and 200 and let me give another area contribution is 800 my uh, operating fixed cost is just 200 and my EBIT becomes 600 then 800 minus 200 600 here what will be my operating leverage be 800 by 600 that is 1.33 so my operating leverage went down here that is because my fixed cost went down but when my fixed cost was very high at 600 my operating leverage was high at 4 so high operating leverage means high operating fixed cost and just like that high fixed leverage means high non operating fixed cost so you will get questions like this in your examination one word or two mark question a company has very high operating leverage compared to last time this year a company has very high operating leverage compared to last year what does that signify you'll have options option a your fixed cost has gone up option b your variable cost has gone up option c your non operating fixed cost has gone up operation d your operating fixed cost has gone up so you need to choose your operating fixed cost has gone up all right understood so is yes, pretty much it for leverage theory is there anything left for me to explain nothing yeah that's all so i hope you got a really good understanding of this study in case you have any doubt please feel free to reach out and also as i always say if you like my content please show me some love like share subscribe comment your thoughts bring in more traffic to my small channel and that would do a great deal of help in my growth as an online educator so with all that said this is nishant regunad signing off and thanking you bye bye and see you in my next video